this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Anthropic Claude models as the default models inside of Copilot Studio. So this video was brought to you by the Community Summit North America. I will actually be speaking at the Community Summit for North America. It's the largest Microsoft AI and Business Solutions user conference on the planet, guys. And from October 19th to the 23rd at the Gaylord Palms in Orlando, Florida, come join me and 5,500 others as we explore how AI is redefining Microsoft business applications. And you can get this scoop at summitna.com. Please come out and support me and come see me. Uh, I'll be happy to answer questions and things at this event. And I look forward to seeing you guys there. And many thanks to them for supporting videos like this to make it easier for me to keep making content for you guys. So let's first start off at answering the question of what is Anthropic and Claude? What are these things? And what they are is they are external different AI providers outside of the Microsoft ecosystem. So if you are familiar with these, you'll know that they are very popular models that are out and available today, but they're not in Azure AI Foundry. So if you wanted to go get one of these and use it as the default model for response generation, or even if you wanna add it in to be able to uh, use it for a prompt that you want, and you're okay with it leaving the Microsoft ecosystem to go to these models that you trust them, then I'm gonna show you today how to be able to do that. And just know these are different models and they give you different benefits and we'll explore and take a look at the quality of the responses that come back on this. But also keep in mind that when you switch the default model inside of Copilot Studio with these, you're actually not just changing the way that the response generation is being done, but you're also changing the model now on how it's going to orchestrate. So if you wanna use one of these and play with it and see if it's gonna give you better results, then you should go definitely go try these out. But in order to do that, there's a few tricks to be able to get that thing enabled within your environments. And I'm gonna walk you through the details of how to do that right now. So let's first talk about what you need to do inside of Copilot Studio to be able to make it where you can actually enable this. And because this is an early release feature, you're going to need to have a preview environment established or you're going to have to be on the early release cycle for your environment. So if you don't know how to do that, I'm gonna show you really quick how to do it. Now I have a more dedicated video that I'll put a link to here, which will teach you how to be able to get the latest features and all of that. But just really quick, the way that we would wanna do this is we would wanna click on the gear and we'd wanna to go to the Power Platform Admin Center and you can go ahead and click Let's Go. Now once we're inside of the Power Platform Admin Center, you'll need to go to Manage and then you'll have environments. And when you go to create an environment, what you're looking for is a release cycle like you see in my preview environment here that says early. Now in order to be able to do this, and you can see I just created this environment, but to do it, you can come in and click new and you can give the environment a name and you need to flip this feature right here, which is the get new features early button. And most likely you're gonna to need to select a developer tenant in order to do that. Now you don't have to use a developer uh, environment necessarily, but it is generally a good place for you to go and to be able to do this. And if you don't have, if you're working off of a trial, you'd be better to use the developer environment. Now, once we've set all of this, you, uh, you can move forward. Once you give it a name, we can just call this test for now. And then we can say next. And then in here, you'll have to give in information about what language and things of this nature. I'd recommend for the latest features, a lot of times English is the default uh, language that they'll come in. So I would suggest that you leave it like that. And if you want sample data, and then once you hit save, it will go create your environment. And once it goes through and you see your state saying ready, you have completed the first step, which is being able to make sure that you have an actual environment that you can use that will allow for you to be able to have external models available in them and the Anthropic and Claude models will be available if you have this setting set. But we also have to go enable them for the environment and I'm gonna show you how to do that. 
because we have to jump over and do it in a different way. But before we do that, let's just jump back to Copilot Studio really quick. So once you're in Copilot Studio, one of the things that you'll need is you'll need an empty agent. And you'll see here that inside of agents within this environment that I don't have an agent. So I can click create or just click new agent here and then just go ahead and click create. Now what this is going to do is it's gonna create you just an empty implementation so that that way you have an agent that you'll be able to work with. And once this agent is fully set up and ready to go, we're gonna take a look at some of the settings just so that you can see what, where we're starting from and then we'll move forward into enabling these additional feature capabilities. Now, it's important to know that you need to be in the environment that we created before and you can see I'm in the preview environment uh, that I had created, which is an early release. Now, once we're inside of this, you'll see here that the agent's model is GPT-4 and what I wanna do is just click this and say edit. And then we'll go in here and you'll see here the model. And you'll see right now that these are the different models that are available in the early release version. Now, you'll notice that we don't have the Anthropic models and we don't see Claude as an option here. So what we wanna do is go make that available into our tenant and then make sure that it shows up in our environment. So how do we do that? So to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to open a tab within our browser and we need to go to admin.microsoft.com, which is also known as the Mac or the Microsoft Admin Center. And this will go through and it'll log in for us. Now, once we've logged in to our environment here or to uh, our Mac, what you need to do is you need to go under Copilot here and then underneath Copilot, what we need to do is we need to go to settings. We then need to go to data access. And in this, we want to click in on AI providers for other language models. And once we click on this, what you're gonna see is that we now see Anthropic is available on the right hand side. And we'll have to come in here and we'll have to accept the terms and allow the provider. Now that we've done this, you'll see that we've actually allowed this for our organization and that will now allow us to be able to go ahead and be able to start using these models inside of Copilot Studio. So just to see that that is working, let's flip back over to Copilot Studio and take a look. So now we're coming back into Copilot Studio and we're opening up that agent that we had created before. Now the key thing is be aware it can take a few minutes for this to replicate throughout your environment and a good shift F5 on these different web browser interfaces might be required for you to be able to see this. And so for me, I had to refresh the page a few times over about a five minute period and then eventually I got to the point where now I can click on the three dots and hit edit and then when we click on the down list here, we can see that we now see that we have Claude Sonnet and we also have Claude Opus uh, in our selections down here. And just be aware that each of these are very different uh, models. One is going to give you uh, reasoning capabilities, uh, much like a GPT-5 has reasoning, you'll see that Claude Opus 4.1 has a reasoning model in it and then know that general task and content creation and things like that, you can use Claude, uh, Claude Sonnet for to be able to do it. So if we just wanted to switch our model to the Claude Sonnet, you're gonna see that it's saying we're going to be doing this and using a preview model. And by doing so, and then clicking save, you'll see that we are now converted over and now by default, we are using Claude Sonnet as a mechanism. Now, if we wanted to go and create a topic, so to see this and to actually try to use this, what we can do is we can also do this inside of prompts. So what I'm gonna do is create a topic here from blank. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm just going to say, uh, this is a tool that analyzes prompts that the user provides. And what we're going to do is then I'm going to create a question 
and we're just gonna say, what is the prompt that you would like to analyze? And from there, we're gonna go in and we're gonna basically just pass the, in, the user's entire response in. We'll put this in and we'll just call this the prompt. Uh, and with that, what we're going to do is we're gonna need to create ourselves a prompt to analyze the actual prompt. And we'll call this, uh, really quick, we'll call this prompt analyzer. And we'll come in and we will say that we wanna add a tool and let's do a new prompt. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, um, uh, analyze this prompt and we're going to do a text input and the text input is going to be uh, prompt to analyze and we'll put one in here and say summarize this text text for the, the best use in an email. And we're just gonna put this in as a test here for us. And then we can say, analyze this prompt to determine how well it will perform and make recommendations on how to improve it based upon the care framework for prompt building. And now with us doing this, we could do this with GPT 4.1 mini and we can run a test on it and we'll see it go through and it'll actually come in and analyze our little test one here and it'll give us the information back. But I'm also, what I wanna do is let's go all the way to a full own reasoning model uh, from Claude. And let's do the Claude Opus 4.1 version. And you're gonna see that we're gonna get a much more robust response. Now it's gonna take longer because again, we're using a reasoning model in this particular scenario. But let's take a look at the difference in what we're gonna see come out. And you'll see here that we've got a very different and much more robust answer. So let's go ahead and save this and keep it uh, available for us. And now that we've got our prompt here, what I can do is I can take this and just say that let's go past the prompt that we're collecting from the user and then let's go and let's drop this into a variable and we're gonna create a new variable and we'll just call this results of prompt analysis. And now we've got the results of prompt analysis. Now, a little trick that I'm gonna show you guys as part of this is that if you'll just say return the values to the original topic, or uh, when you say that, it'll actually go into the response generator and let the response generator handle this for us as the way to be able to do it. So you don't actually have to put this into an output for you to be able to use. And so now that we've done that, if we just go in and we say that we would like to go and test this, we can now test this and we can say to it, um, I want to test my prompt. And when I do this, it's going to fire off in the activity map. It's going to say, oh, well, the thing that we need to do is we need to go to the prompt analyzer. And what you're going to see is it's going to say, what is the prompt you would like to analyze? And I can just go and say, summarize this text, text um, for a email to be sent. 
And then there's a very simple prompt. It's something that probably follows no rules whatsoever, but we're gonna send it in and we're gonna let it go and do its analysis on this and then spit us back out the results. And what you're gonna see is that now once we've done this, you're gonna end up with an output that's coming back that is coming back from Claude. And Claude's gonna come back and give us a ton of information on what we might want to do to be able to enhance our prompt. And you can even see it gave me, oh, well, here's a better uh, prompt for you. And then here's also some of the current issues that are happening with this based upon the care framework. And so again, this is just an example of how we can use it in the prompt. Now, when we want to take this and we want to use it in just a response generation, and again, when we go to overview, you can see that we put Sonnet in for this. So let's go ahead and add some knowledge. So let's add the first piece of knowledge, which is a public website. And let's just put Microsoft.com in, hit add, and hit add to agent. And what we're gonna do now is we can have a conversation and now what will happen is if we ask a question that's based upon knowledge, we're going to end up using, uh, using the Claude implementation instead of the standard implementation in, in OpenAI. And so I will just ask, you know, uh, where can I find drivers for a Surface Pro 9? And when I ask this question, you'll see it's going to go out and it's going to try to get the answer to this. And you're going to see that it's gone out and it's actually went and got us an answer for this. Now, the thing is, is that you can see here that there's an orchestrator at play that's going on and I've changed this orchestrator. So just be aware that you're gonna get a little bit different behavior. So let's just clear this out really quick so we don't have anything in the conversational context. And let's ask our question to knowledge. So let's ask, where can I find drivers for a Surface Pro? nine. And with this, we hope that it will go out and it will pull and try to get this information from knowledge, which you can see it decided that that's the place to do it. Now that decision was made by Claude. It was not because we're using Claude as the actual orchestration engine at this point to be able to go and do this. And then the summarization of the content is coming back from the Claude model. And you can see this is very different from what you would get if you use the OpenAI implementation. So what I'll do is I'll flip over to OpenAI and you'll see what the difference looks like between the two. So let's go and do that setting change really quick. So let's go ahead and go in and hit edit. Let's change this and let's just go back to the default one, which is, uh, right, let's go to 4.1 preview as an example and run this, run this test again. And you can see our changes are saved. We'll need to definitely refresh our browser. You can see here that in GPT-4.1 is what we're doing. And if I ask the question now of where can I find drivers for the Surface Pro 9, we're gonna get a little bit different behavior happening inside of Copilot Studio. So it's gonna fire over and definitely go get the same knowledge, but we're gonna see a very different kind of response coming back because we're using 4.1 instead of the Claude implementation. Well, I hope you guys found this video very interesting and for more videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and as always, you can go try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.